Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for your word. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good with every breath that people oh i will sing of the goodness of god i love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights you are close like no other i've known you as a father I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good with every breath that I Mabel, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we are going to get into Joseph, and uh, there's a few chapters, so We'll do a couple at a time um, and finish out the week. I was going to condense it a little, but there's a lot in the story. And if you all recall, uh, Joseph had lost his mother when she gave birth to Benjamin. And um, so Joseph then being heartbroken and, you know, we don't know if he had anything in his heart against his brother Benjamin, but you often hear of children that lose a parent during, um, you know, a circumstance or childbirth that they sometimes are not as kind with that other sibling. It doesn't indicate that in this part of the story, but at this time, um, they were living in the land of Canaan. It says that Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the story of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brothers and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives and Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he had made him a tunic of many colors. The tradition in those days, a tunic of many colors was often given to a prince or in uh, a lot of cases, some of the women wore them when they were preparing to become um, married or betrothed, but mainly for a man, a tunic of many colors was given to a prince. There was distinction about that. Also, it indicates that Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children. So we know that he loved Rachel uh, more than he loved Leah and any other person. He wanted to marry Rachel from the beginning, but uh, their father played a trick on him and put Leah in the tent. And he didn't know that it was Leah until he had already gone in unto her and she became his wife. And then the 
two maids of the two sisters were part of uh, the, you know, the women trying to give extra children to him. So it was all this time of manipulation. But in all of it, Joseph was the one that was loved the most out of all of them. And so when his brother saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now, Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. Then there we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf rose up also stood upright and instead indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf and his brother said to him shall you indeed reign over us or shall you indeed have dominion over us so they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said look I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, here I am. Then he said to him, please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him. And there he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him saying, who are you seeking? So he said, I'm seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flock. The man said, they have departed from here. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Now, when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. And they said to one another, look, the dreamer's coming. Come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit, and we shall say some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it, Reuben being the oldest, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. Reuben said to them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit, which is in the wilderness and do not lay a hand on him and he that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So Reuben was going to protect him in this plan. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many co colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty. There was no water in it, and they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh, and his brothers listened. Then the Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. So these were traders that were passing through, and they knew that they would be able to get a good amount of money for a 17-year-old male I don't know that they knew his lineage. All they knew is that they could sell him as a slave. Then Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit, and he tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, and I, where shall I go? 
So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know where it is your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, and the captain of the guard. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So even though he was given as a slave, the Lord put grace upon him and he had favor with him to where he would be, he would be thought of highly by the Pharaoh. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in this house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me, but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was, as she spoke to Joseph day by day, that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house were inside that she got caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, see, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to me to mock me. So it happened. As I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. 
The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. Whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. So this time frame of Joseph's life as a young man, he was living in a very wealthy home. And then he was turned against by his brothers um, when he shared his dream. You know, he was a little bit, um, maybe a little arrogant with them, but he also had the feeling of himself being a prince. And um, so he went from being wealthy to being a slave, to being like a prince in the Pharaoh's home, to being in prison. And all through that, God showed favor to him and gave different things in his life that brought certain attention from the Egyptian Pharaoh. And so this is um, a story that's going to continue in other areas as uh, he continues there in the prison. And it'll be interesting to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> God bless all of you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen.